is 12 o'clock. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We are super excited that um, you've been able to take out some time so you can hear a little bit more of what's going on with the Office of Equity and Inclusion. So welcome to our first of the six Friday Forum Town Halls. For your information, this session is being recorded to allow the Office of Equity and Inclusion to capture your questions and concerns and use this information to inform our work as we continue to implement the roadmaps, goals, and objectives. Um, I forgot to introduce myself, so my name is Rachel Bonaparte. I am the Pacey, the committee chair for the president's, um, the, for the president's <laughs> Um, Committee on Equity and Inclusion today. So thank you for coming again. My name is Rachel Bonaparte. And um, if you can, take a minute to mute yourself so we can all um, hear the speakers for today. We encourage you to ask questions through the chat box, which is being monitored. During these interactive sessions, you will learn about the college's equity and inclusion roadmap for success. MC is committed to becoming an equity-minded institution and we seek to aim high and commit to amplify, integrate, and measure our work. By working together, we will continue to pursue equitable student outcomes, inclusive excellence in teaching and learning, and fair and inclusive employee experiences. We will raise our institution to a level of civility of which we can all be proud of. Today, uh, we have the pleasure of hearing from Sharon Bland, the college's equity an inclusion officer. Um, she will be discussing an overview of the roadmap. As CEIO, Sharon's overarching responsibility is to advance the college's mission and goals related to equity, radical inclusion, anti-racism, social justice, civil rights, and human rights by creating, revising, and implementing programs such as these policies and initiatives. As the executive convener of the President's Advisory Committee on Equity and Inclusion, she developed the roadmap which is intended to enhance the campus climate around equity and inclusion. She works to identify barriers to equal access and ensure that inclusiveness is represented in all aspects of college and study throughout Montgomery College and is a leading, um, and essentially she's leading a strategic planning effort around building a culture of inclusivity to maximize diverse, equitable work, teaching and learning environments for students and employees. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to uh, turn the program over to Ms. Bland. Thank you so much, Rachel, I appreciate you. And uh, Rachel is, as she mentioned, the chair of the President's Advisory Committee on Equity and Inclusion. She began her term in July. I wanna thank all of the members of uh, Pacey, who participated in, um, in developing this roadmap and the, under the leadership of Dr. Deborah Bright, who, uh, who chaired uh, the work of this, um, of this committee. Uh, we are now in um, phase two of, uh, of this work in that we have um, obviously published the roadmap now and uh, we are moving forward with um, with discussing um, elements that are in the roadmap. You will, we, we have six sessions because this one is, gen, is intended to give a general overview. And then we have five additional section, sessions that correspond to each one of the goals. So as you see here, the mission of PC uh, is to provide leadership to create an inclusive, civil, um, and respectful environment um, that achieves equity for all. And uh, this roadmap provides recommendations that give voice to the Montgomery College 2025 strategic plan themes and the MC mission and values, which affirm equity and inclusion. Um, also, I just wanna note that this is a living document. It's intended to um, continue to be uh, revised and updated with current information and new um, language. Uh, one of the things that we, um, we note is that we are continually, um, uh, rapidly, frankly, 
um, uh, the, the nation as well as the world developing in, um, in, in language and the way that we communicate about equity and inclusion um, issues. Some of the things that you, um, that, that are new were um, since we completed this document um, is one that Ibram Kendi published a book called uh, How to Be an Anti-Racist. And that is something that we uh, have been looking at, studying, reading, and we're gonna kick off the, um, the uh, discussion of, of that book on October 2nd in our Friday forums. So we intend to have Friday forums um, to discuss issues that may come up um, in, in the college community around these issues. Um, so the broad scope of equity inclusion work really is um, throughout the college. As you can see, I'm sure every single person on this call can find themselves in one of these 10 uh, major areas of work. So why do we need to consider E&I at all? Um, so many people have said to me, well, you know, we had a diversity officer. We, we have the most diverse um, uh, community college in the, in the continental U.S. Um, and, and, and so what, what is this? And so um, we really uh, recognize we have a lot of diversity at our college, but not all of uh, the work that we do um, and the environments in which we work and teach are equitable or inclusive. And so, why do we need to consider e and I? Well, to demonstrate care, to acknowledge and be mindful of things that are happening um, in our country right now and society and its effects in the classroom and on our colleagues. To create a sense of belonging and a welcoming environment. Um, and, and also to, um, you know, when we think about welcoming environments, we think about you know, use of names. Why do people um, like to use pronouns um, uh, and, and ask about pronouns? Um, because we want people to, we want to address people in the way that they want to be addressed. Um, and to create, nurture, and sustain a campus uh, culture that can ultimately lead to improving student success, to diversifying, diversifying the ranks of faculty, administrators, staff, to facilitate meaningful engagement concerning critical issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I just ask you to consider, how do you show up in class? How do you show up in your office environment? And you, you uh, feel free to ponder those uh, questions, uh, uh, that question as we continue this presentation. So, um, so what has the Office of Equity and Inclusion uh, been up to? So I started in this role three years ago. Um, as I mentioned, the, uh, the idea of a one MC book of the year. Um, we, last year we read uh, White Fr Fragility and we had um, in our spring equity dialogue session, um, book conversations about that. Uh, and then as I mentioned this, this year, we are uh, looking at, um, at, at uh, how to be an anti-racist um, by Ibram Kendi. Um, so we also have had fall and spring equity dialogue sessions. We've had pizza, very successful pizza for your thoughts for students. We're over, um, we've talked to over a thousand students through our pizza for your thoughts. In 2019, we had our annual equity summit and we'll be having, um, again, the Annual Excellence and Equity Awards. We started that um, in 2019. It continues this year. The award ceremony um, is set for um, October 23rd. And then we started this, this summer with a Let's Talk Conversation series. That series uh, developed into a three-part conversation series where we had over 700 uh, students, employees, and community members engage with us on, um, on hot topics. And the hot topic that uh, initiated this was the killing of George Floyd. Um, we talked about uh, the American subjugation of the Black community. We talked about how we can create healing for our community. 
um, the second Let's Talk focused on, um, on uh, white privilege and, um, and I showed a, a short video of, um, of uh, different instances of white privilege demonstrated by the, the, uh, the name Karen, um, which if you Google it, in pop it's in popular lexicon now. Uh, representing, um, uh, uh, typically representing a white woman of privilege. We also talked about say her name. Uh, we, we had a meditation uh, moment in that, in that session. And we really talked about how we can be, an, how people can be allies for change. We talked about the Breonna Taylor um, killing and, uh, and really um, the violence perpetuated against black and brown women. Um, and so what are we up to these days? Uh, so we published the roadmap on July 1st. And again, I mentioned we're sharing this roadmap uh, this month and next. Um, and then operationalizing this roadmap. So incorporating new ideas and developing uh, a five-year timeline with mechanisms to me measure progress. And which is key for us, and then discuss advancing racial equity, anti-racism, and furthering the radical inclusion that Dr. Pollard yes, uh, I it would be. has been focused on over the past 10 years. So let me just share with you some of the goals. Um, most people um, uh, should be familiar with these goals. I've been talking about them now for a year. Uh, we developed them uh, last year through PACI and the, um, the objectives and recommendations in the roadmap um, uh, are now aligned to these. What I wanted to share with you um, in particular about the roadmap is that it is, um, it's, it's a, a packed uh, um, plan. And it is intended to, uh, for us to really to serve as a guide. And serving as a guide means there are ideas, thoughts, objectives, recommendations throughout the roadmap that uh, the expectation is that people will find their place in that roadmap. And the object uh, objectives and recommendations outlined will be carried out by members of the college community who have responsibility in those areas. And can, can we mute everyone? Well, sure, could you ask everyone who's not in yourself speaking to mute themselves, please? Officially, but it's certainly can, can everyone mute themselves, please? You're the host or co-host. You can click on mute all and just make sure Sharon is unmuted and that would mute everybody in one stroke. Thank you. Rachel, were you able to do that? No, I think Jackie was the creator of it. And you're the co-host. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so, um, and you will also see these goals. Um, these are not um, in a vacuum. These are, um, are part of the work that we're doing overall in the college, in our strategic plan, in um, the institutional goals um, that the president and the board of trustees have, um, have uh, uh, endorsed and implemented. I um, mean, you see here goal two, um, this is really focusing on our employees, um, improving employee recruitment, hiring, onboarding, development and training procedures and practices. And, and this is intended to attract and retain a diverse workforce. Um, that includes leaders, managers, faculty, staff, uh, administrators that are reflective of the college's diverse student populations. And this is key, you know, many um, studies have shown um, the core, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the distinction between um, and success of students when they um, see people in their environments um, that they resonate with, that share sim similar backgrounds, that may look like them, et cetera. And so that's really um, what that is intended to do. It's also intended to 
um, to be inward uh, focusing on um, um, providing our employees with the tools that they need, that we need to do our work and to do the best work we can do and, and to um, thrive in, in, um, in the best college culture we can make. And then goal three is furtherance of um, fostering college culture. Um, two years ago, I, um, Pacey produced uh, civility norms. I hope that you all have had a chance to look at those and have received copies of them. They are also on our website. Uh, but those really um, are aspirational um, uh, norms that uh, we feel will help foster college culture of civility, accessibility, kindness, trust, and respect for human dignity. And we um, in Pacey have proposed recommendations and, and objectives um, uh, through targeted programs, activities, and educational opportunities to in furtherance of, of that, um, of, of creating positive um, college culture. And then goal four, um, multicultural teaching, learning, and experiences. So you know, this is really uh, not just focused on the curricular, but the co-curricular activities and uh, the multitude of uh, experiences that make up um, a, a, um, a, college, a college experience. And then goal five is around our work as um, a community college, right? So embracing that we do serve the community, that we serve the community when we partner with community organizations, when we um, have uh, the, um, the health and wellness um, outreach that, that we do, um, when we serve our community through mobile markets, when we engage in small minority and women-owned businesses uh, that are based in Montgomery County, um, uh, and that we um, are culturally responsive in that manner. So those are the five goals, and I'd be happy to uh, respond to any questions uh, around there. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, some general recommendations. So, um, you know, I'd ask you to consider these two questions as you're thinking about um, uh, what an equitable and inclusive environment for both students and employees look like in your area? And what are some of the objectives and recommendations outlined in the Equity Inclusion Roadmap that relate to the work that you're doing in your area within the college? So those are the quest two questions that I have for you. Um, let's see, Rachel, if you could put those two questions in the chat so people can just take them and ponder them as we are uh, as we are, are talking. So I'm going to um, stop sharing uh, this screen and um, be happy to uh, take any questions that you may have at this moment. Um, and then I will continue on and talking about some general uh, recommendations um, that are outlined in the roadmap. Okay, so I will go ahead and um, and move forward with the, um, sure, yeah, the, let's see, I think I can put the link here. Um, let's see here. All right. So this is the roadmap. Hopefully um, many of you have seen this. Uh, it is found on the OEI website. 
Um, as, you, as I mentioned, it's, um, it's rather dense. It's 76 pages. Um, let me move through it. Um, so um, the first thing I wanted to point out to you here is the cycle of uh, change. And this cycle of change is something that um, uh, we developed and uh, really started talking with the college community about at the Equity Summit. It began with the theme of the 2019 Equity Summit, which was about awareness. Um, and that, uh, that's what we've been on a journey around over the past um, couple of years is awareness. And the college community acclimated with the terminology that we use. Um, earlier this summer, I hosted a conversation about inclusive language. I learned about, uh, about ways of talking um, and shared um, definitions. And so um, I'm hoping that, uh, that you all will avail yourselves of uh, the uh, definitions that have been adopted uh, that are also listed on the OEI web, website. Um, and then we move to understanding. So um, let's talk about this a little bit. So awareness, inquiring knowledge of a situation and facts, listening, recognizing inequities, asking questions, and participating in programs such as this, and then understanding, really perceiving the meaning of equitable and inclusive actions. What do they look like? How are we mindful of them in our day-to-day -day actions? And then doing our own research. You know, um, we've talked uh, to many people throughout the college community about individual action and um, how it's, uh, this, is, this is new work for many people. And so therefore, um, you won't get everything from listening to a session, right? You'll get um, more information, become um, more understanding of these issues through individual work. And then embracing, recognizing that and acknowledging inequities and social issues exist. And, um, and that, um, the, that our country was, was built on, um, on issues of privilege and, and, um, and really thinking about um, and accepting that equity and inclusion work is paramount. And then commitment. So getting involved. Um, so this is not, you know, Sharon Bland's work. This is not the work of uh, Pacey alone. This is all of our work. Um, and, and then, uh, so being accountable to that and, and actively eradicating inequities and actively creating inclusive environments. And what does that look like? And, and, we, and, and, and I encourage us all to question everything that we do when we're, and before we're, we do it and as we're doing it, and then reflecting uh, on, on things that we do um, and, and, and ask those questions. Well, did we do anything active to eradicate an inequity? Do we do anything active to create an inclusive environment? And then action. So identifying and executing plans to continually drive equity and inclusion inside and outside of the classroom and within our communities. And then change. You know, all of this is reviewing, reviewing the circle again. So um, reviewing our policies and practices and action plans to continually contribute to being a more equitable and inclusive community, and then documenting, evaluating, and strengthening these outcomes. I mean, part of the work that um, as educators we do uh, is, is evaluation, right? So we have evaluators at every level, middle states evaluation, our own self-evaluations, um, uh, uh, what we, uh, what the information we provide to, um, to uh, MHAC, uh, the Maryland Higher Education Commission, et cetera. So, um, so um, uh, you know, uh, the key here, really, and I hope you all will take 
this slide and just post it uh, up so you can um, be thinking about this on a regular basis. Okay, so um, any questions about the cycle of change? I actually am not monitoring the chat, so I don't know if anything's in there, Rachel. Uh, there hasn't been any questions that came in just yet. Okay, great. So I will move on. Um, I'm going to just kind of fly through this because um, these are the some of the um, uh, definitions that I that I uh, spoke with you about earlier. We've actually added uh, to these definitions. As I've shared with you uh, about this work being iterative. We've actually added definitions of uh, what it means to be an anti-racist and what white supremacy means because people have asked many questions about even those definitions. Um, you will see in this document that, sorry, that um, we've done a lot of assessments. We have reviewed um, many documents, uh, conducted and, and reviewed surveys. Um, as, as some of you uh, who've been at the college for a couple of years know that we've had an equity and inclusion survey uh, uh, two times. Uh, we are actually embarking this fall on a comprehensive survey of um, employee engagement and college culture, which will incorporate the equity inclusion and the uh, ethics surveys as well as employee engagement surveys. So we, um, this work, you know, when I came to the college, I talked to Dr. Pollard about developing this roadmap. And I said, well, you know, um, this isn't a Sharon Bland roadmap. This is a roadmap for the college and, and everyone needs to be included in this roadmap and, and, and hence the development of, of PACI. And then, and then the development of PACI in that uh, members represent um, the college at every level in departments throughout the college. And uh, so then we broke into subcommittees and you will see eight subcommittees here that um, uh, produced a number of objectives. And uh, the first subcommittee that you'll see here is the student experience and college culture subcommittee. Please definitely look in there. You will find yourself in there. I, I noticed uh, both Jane Ellen and uh, Donna Shen on this call. And so you will, uh, as you know, um, the technology plan is, uh, is one of the objectives in here, and I know that uh, they are working hard on that right now. In addition, uh, our work on disability inclusion. Um, you know, one of the, uh, one of the um, items in the Middle State Self-Study talked about um, our work um, and our um, to the implementation of Americans with Disabilities Act. And so this uh, subcommittee has been working feverishly to um, not only uh, get out an RFP to assess um, disability inclusion at all levels, but also on um, proposing um, objectives that will further our efforts in, in this area. And you will find that in the roadmap as well. Um, in the Faculty Teaching and Curriculum Subcommittee, uh, this subcommittee really, um, you know, needed to, to um, thread a, fi a, a, a fine, um, uh, through fine needles to, to um, incorporate um, suggestions and recommendations from faculty council, from um, governance, et cetera, and to listen to students to um, determine some of the things that students ask for uh, and would make them feel more equitable and inclusive. And you will see there one particular thing is the strength and diversity statement. It's objective four on the college-wide syllabus template. And you can take a look at that when you get a chance also. Then we have the subcommittee on human resources, recruiting, hiring, retention, and succession planning. Yes, that's a big a, a long title, but we wanted to make sure that we were looking at all of these aspects involved with, um, with employees. One of the things that have come out of that that I'm really proud of and in, in collaboration 
with uh, HR STEM has been um, piloting a search advocate program. Um, some of you have participated in that training. We have over 50 people trained as search advocates now at the college. Uh, and whenever we come off of our hiring freeze and, and can start hiring again, we will be um, utilizing that program to help us um, uh, and serve as a neutral process advisor on equity inclusion, um, addressing things such as bias, et cetera, within searches. In the uh, Nationwide Peer Institution Best Practices Assessment Section uh, Committee, uh, they took a look across the country, uh, not just at, at like Maryland uh, Community Colleges, but other best practices to, um, to um, really curate uh, some of the best thinking. And, um, and you'll see some of those um, recommendations and objectives uh, listed there. One of the things that came out uh, from that is to finalize and roll out a one pager on the student complaint process. We rolled that out um, uh, through the Office of Compliance, Risk and Ethics uh, in the spring of this year. And so hopefully you all have had a chance to look at that is found on the Office of Compliance's website. The subcommittee report uh, on reports and communications. Well, really, you know, in, in doing this work, one of the things that we most often heard was, yeah, well, we're doing this over here and we're doing that over here, but people aren't hearing about it. In fact, um, the, the, one of the committees um, had made a recommendation on, on something that we were doing, but not many people knew that we were doing it. And one of the student vo in, in student voices and pizza for your thoughts, students wanted um, to, to um, uh, be availed of translation services. Um, and, and this is something that's, um, that we're actually already doing at the college. And, uh, and one of the recommendations were to enhance that. Uh, so um, we will also, and also with regard to publishing information in different languages. Um, and this was work that was ongoing. Um, at the time, Casey got the work underway two and a half years ago. And so um, the Office of Communications and, and all of those involved in technology um, uh, have, um, have provided uh, access in, in different languages when you click on the website. We still need to do work on getting our individual um, newsletters and that type of thing um, made available in different languages and, and making sure that they're accessible to um, people that have accessibility concerns. Okay, and then uh, the last uh, subcommittee was on uh, training, dialogue, events, and celebrations. Um, through this committee came the, uh, the idea of the Equity Summit. And, um, and so um, some of those, so, you know, I consider part of the work that we do is being responsive to uh, what the college community asks for. Um, and so being responsive means that we're nimble um, when there is uh, something going on um, that involves uh, look, taking a look at through an equity and inclusion lens where we um, are able to be responsive and jump on that. Um, hence uh, the, the Let's Talk series, hence um, some of the um, equity inclusion pop-ups that you, um, that, that uh, Jeanette Rojas in my office um, started for us last year when she came on board and that um, will be a, a essential tenant and element of the work that we do in equity inclusion. And then um, some of the uh, things you'll see here, supporting training of part-time employees. Um, I, you know, I know um, uh, that that is, is a big deal. Um, and and um, while we were writing this recommendation, um, uh, the, the uh, Office of Advancement and Community Engagement um, was also uh, working on this by um, producing, um, I believe it's the Schoenberg, Schoenberg, is that how you pronounce it? Um, Rachel Fellowship. Correct, the Schoenberg, yep. Yeah, for part-time faculty. Um, okay, so let's see. 
And then, oh, I'm sorry, the last uh, subcommittee, uh, Workforce Development, Community Engagement, Business Practices, and Procurement. That's a mouthful also, but we wanted to get, uh, get in there. All of the, uh, again, the sort of the community focused, the exterior uh, um, out, outward foot, um, facing work that we do. And, um, and, and there uh, you can see um, um, some of the work in terms of creating awareness of MC's welcoming environment for individuals and for businesses. And, through the work of, of Steve Greenfield and, and others in, in uh, George Payne's uh, area of workforce development, we have um, we've, we've really reached out in that regard as well as um, as well as in Patrick Johnson's area in procurement and the work that they're doing um, uh, expanding opportunities for minority and women-owned businesses. So that is a general overview of, of um, what you will find. Uh, as listed as objectives in the roadmap. Um, what I'm going to go to here is um, the, the, at the, um, the, the committee uh, worked in, uh, in all of their, in their areas, um, uh, um, creating objectives. And then um, the Office of Equity and Inclusion met with community members uh, and, 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 and uh, members of the college throughout on um, every division and, um, and looked at some general recommendations that we had and some things that we wanted to amplify that people were already doing. And so, um, so uh, and you can read those uh, again for yourself um, here, but um, let me just point out a couple of things. Um, uh, we want to, one of the things that we heard was um, we, uh, uh, college, the, the men, members of the college community wanted, uh, were interested in in um, uh, more efforts uh, geared towards the LGBTQ community, uh, community. And so um, one of the recommendations that we've put forward is to conduct a needs assessment so we can really identify and pinpoint where, our, um, our, where the points are that we um, need to, to, work, to work on. Um, and then again, uh, the hiring diverse faculty, one of the things that, um, that uh, through the Office of um, Academic Affairs and Dr. Sanjay Rai's uh, area has been promoting minority faculty internship program. And that has um, been, uh, been a policy now for about 20 years. And, uh, and, and we want to amplify the use of that, uh, of that program. Um, and then again, um, the work in the uh, employee and labor relations. Um, one of the things that we heard was that, you know, someone will submit a complaint and it'll go through this person, that person, and then, uh, and then we may not hear what happens or there wasn't a lot of closure. And so um, ELR um, uh, committed to the, um, to the timelines that you see here, which actually are already in policy and procedure, but really making sure that, 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 that these are committing to um, ideals. So uh, inclusion, diversity, equity, um, access, leadership, and social justice. And you can see, uh, see some of those uh, that are listed there. I wanted to also provide uh, through um, Professor Karen Pende Martinez, helping us look at the uh, demographic groups at Montgomery College. And so I will draw that to your attention. That was based on the 2019 fall profile. Uh, as you can see there, um, the percentages of women, men, um, of um, an institutional personnel and uh, student enrollment. And then um, what you will find in the county as well. So. And then lastly, um, equity plans. So, you know, there are many, many divisional equity efforts that are already underway. The Student Success Network is an example of that. Um, and academic affairs leading the way in, in, in many of the disciplines. Um, the Student Health and Wellness Center for Success, the Shaw Center doing all of that great work that, that, um, that they've been doing. Um, this year we're curating a number of diversity, equity, inclusion, um, uh, events and um, courses online as well as, well, 
video as well as, you know, obviously we're in an online environment, uh, that people can take advantage of um, this year as part of, as part of required training. And, um, and then I just took, you know, a couple other things um, that are general in nature, um, public safety uh, staff training, which has been um, uh, ongoing and, um, uh, and that is, uh, the public safety staff has really taken advantage of, of, uh, of those trainings and, um, and moving towards um, um, more, um, uh, special police officers in that regard. All right, so that is pretty much um, the um, the conclusion of the roadmap. All right, are there any other um, any questions that you would like to, or any thoughts that you have um, and you'd like to share or talk about? Um, any efforts that, uh, that you may have undertaken that um, people may not know about? Um, I'd be interested in, in what you're doing in, in your own individual areas, be it in the classroom or in your office environment. How are you relating to, to staff and in, in your colleagues in this Zoom environment, and, and how's that been going anyway? Um, you know, we hear about the Zoom fatigue and people just, you know, getting tired of doing this all day, every day. Uh, I had a message from a colleague about, uh, yeah, we want to do something, but people are tired of Zoom, so can we figure out another way of doing things? So I'd, I'd be interested in, 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 you know, some ideas that, that you may have. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Maurice. Monster energy drink, that's the trick. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm on uh, coffee all day. So I'm, I, between my coffee and my water, I, I, I try to get up for some stretch breaks. Actually, you know, the, um, the, I, I've, I've tried the 60 second and that really works. I love that, that, that minute um, pause to help, to help recenter. Any other um, things that people have, have done or tried? Sharon, one question that just came in um, for you was, what is one of the biggest roadblocks that you see with um, trying to enforce the, um, what, what did I say? But, Enforce the goals. Hmm. Yeah. So that's a good question. Um, I think it's again going back to awareness and education. So these things are doable. You know, there are some bold, audacious goals also that are here, but they're doable. And, and I, I believe with um, all of my heart that, that, um, that with our collective efforts, we can move through, um, through these over the next five years. Uh, I'd say that, you know, obviously in this COVID environment, the in-person, you know, um, ability to, um, to touch and feel and, you know, be in physical um, presence with our colleagues and our students, you know, is a challenge, you know, just the, the COVID environment and in which we're dealing with um, and, and, you know, hiring freezes and, and you know, budget concerns. Um, but, you know, one of the things that you will see in this roadmap is um, many things um, require change in policy or practice. They are not, um, uh, they're not all dependent on, um, and maybe changes in budget lines, but they're not uh, dependent on new money in most of these cases. 
So it's college will, right? What do we want to do? What are we going to do? So I hope I answered that. I'm going to put, um, I think I can do this. Uh, Rachel, can you, we're going to do, um, I allotted 90 minutes for this conversation. And um, so we have 45 minutes left. And I don't think um, uh, I'm going to, we're going to take all of that time. But I would like to uh, do about 20 minutes of breakout in our breakout rooms to just talk about the two questions that um, Rachel put in the chat. So Rachel, if we could just do random uh, breakout rooms, that would be great. All right, tell me something. Tell me something, Donna. What you learned today? Uh, it, it really, it, we, it, <laughs> <laughs> it was a great conversation. I have to tell you, Sharon, it, it really was a small group, but lots and lots of conversation um, that it's one of those things I, I didn't pay. I'm listening to of the moment and we're all talking about the moment, but it really is about life's experience. And, and, and I had shared that when I started thinking about um, equity and inclusion in the context of the lived experience, and you've heard me speak about this before, it just focuses, for me anyway, focuses me in, um, in, a, in, a, in a better way of, of understanding and paying attention. But it was great. Maurice, it was, you know, it just was really good. Very good experience. Right. But your little breakout rooms are always good. Oh, thank you. Madden. Yes, ma'am. Because yes, ma when you got to the college, I don't know. I think you said Susan Madden, and then somebody said Madden. And so I've been calling her Madden ever since. Anyway, That's Susan. fine. I'm all good. I only wish I got the royalties <laughs> off that game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyway, any Celtics fans? You know, my family's from Massachusetts originally. And oh, my God, yes. We're in the... Oh, we're in my the God. No, we're right ripping now. our hair out here every night. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, sorry. As an aside, how'd your, how'd your group go? Um, our group was great. I met um, a new person at the college, and she tried to teach me how to say her name. Carly Yvette. Thank you, dear. <laughs> um, Carly Yvette. It's me, Carly Yvette. <laughs> Thank you. Carly Yvette. Okay, hi. Just Carly Vet, like Corvette, Carly Vet. Carly Vet. All right. Yeah, That's it's a, it's, it's a, a combination effort. of my parents' name, Carlos and Yvette. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. To her point that she was making for us in our small group, she made a um, a reference to a car, a Corvette, that I would know and understand about to help me remember how to pronounce her name. And the point that she was making in our group is we don't do enough of those kinds of cultural references and deeper understanding of the community that we serve to help deepen their understanding and advance their success at the college, right? Mm. And I don't have a deeper understanding of say, cultural references that would help them see things like she helped me see and hear her name how can i actually help a student succeed um so i thought that was really helpful to me to think about where we take our roadmap and what work we have to do and we're very lucky to have people like carla vet um help us see those things very nice thank you for sharing. thank you carly vet since you're you know you were mentioned you have anything you want to add yeah, sure. So I think we had a really uh, nice conversation. And uh, just to give a little bit about my background, I've been at the college since 2013. And uh, I've had different roles. Um, previously, I was a community engagement specialist. And now I work for financial aid. Mm -hmm. So I'm a financial aid outreach counselor. And I'll tell you what, it's really difficult um, to see um, what equity and inclusion looks like in the financial aid office when you're working virtually. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's really difficult, but I can tell you that we have a diverse group of, of, of counselors and um, you know, we're all working really hard. We, and I was, one of the things that I was saying is that you know, we work with all the same students. You know, Montgomery County is very diverse, um, but that doesn't mean that because we have the diversity that there aren't disparities. 
And mm-hmm. so, you know, I think it's important to be able to know how to address those disparities. And one of the things that I think is really interesting that people don't think about is evaluation and assessment. So um, in my master's program, I took a, a, a course called program evaluation, and it really opened up my eyes to understand in higher education how evaluation and assessment really isn't um, as equitable and inclusive, inclusive as it should be. Um, and that's one of the things that we were talking about with uh, uh, Susan is that, um, you know, just the way you ask the question is so important. You don't know yes. how the other person is going to take it. You, you don't understand, you know, like what it means to that person. And if you don't even include a certain culture or race, you're already not being inclusive. So it's, it's just like the census, you know, the census is so, I mean, wow, like just, how, how can you be inclusive and equitable in assessment and evaluation? Because if we're not doing that, then even the metrics aren't going to give us the measures that we require in order to actually make things equitable and just. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So that was just one of my points. Yeah. That was just, yeah. you know. Well, now you have an, uh, uh, um, some new, new ways of thinking about some things. Sounds like. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I learned so much. Like, I really appreciate my master's program. I love it. It was in Indiana State University and it was in student affairs and higher education. And I mm. appreciate it so much because I even learned that in the counseling profession, we don't have enough diversity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and um, the representation just isn't there. So, you know, when the representation isn't there, you're not going to speak your students' language. You know, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to have that transparency. You're just not going to have it. So um, I, I think it's, this conversation is so important. I mean, we have to continue to, I mean, I think the work that you guys are doing is great, you know. That and we are doing. You're part of <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that we are all doing. You're right, that we are all doing. Yes, Um and uh, I, I just think it's great. And, and I just want to continue to be a part of it and, and just understand these, these little nuances, you know, these little things that kind of get us um, thinking about equity and inclusion in the way that, that we should. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Kimberly McNair, you were the first person on. So I'd like you to share what you, uh, your session. And then I believe, uh, Howard Feinstein, you wrote something in the chat. I'd love to hear your perspective. Okay. Either one can go first. Who's on here? Yeah, go ahead. Me, Howard? Yeah, you're on. Okay. Um, one thing we discussed was, um, I brought up, try to be concise here, um, part-time faculty promotion toward full-time. Um, there's a lot of part-time faculty who tend to be quite a bit more diverse than full-time. They're younger, haven't been around as much. Um, they're not ancient white people like me, although I'm an adjunct and um, that's what I am. I'm sort of at the end of my career. Some of them are quite bitter about applying but constantly being passed over for full-time positions. Uh, they tend to be very heavily female and minority. I wonder um, if there's something that could be done um, maybe to take a look at that. And one of the people in our group, it was, uh, I think it was um, Ms. Karen Pende Martinez mentioned the Spurge Advocate, which I'd be happy to do. Um, I think there's, you know, there's something could be done there. In terms of, uh, that also helps a lot in terms of faculty, quote, looking like me for the students. One thing I do in that looking for me, looking like me, is I bring in as many guest speakers as I can um, who will reflect the student population. Um, nice. So many of our students come in because of cultures from other countries or whatever with very low expectations professionally and even academically. Um, I try to show them that there are minority, female, LGBT, et cetera, um, people in government, it's, it's pretty lucky for me because I'm in political science teaching government around here. Um, it's not right. role models, but we can all do that. 
bring in a black chemist, bring in a, uh, a Latino uh, artist or something like that. Um, and they stay around, they talk to these people, uh, get them internships, um, get them part-time job leads, um, you know, integrate them with this wonderful community we have here. We're not some little college in the middle of Wyoming. You know, this is the national capital. We probably have a better employment opportunities and internships than just about, than just about anybody. And then finally, not really finally, but one other thing, um, if we can show a student that we have their back, students have problems with financial aid, even though they're obviously good people, but they don't know how to penetrate that, that, uh, that bureaucracy. They have uh. trouble, they have trouble with, with um, uh, disability support. I've listened to some horrific stories there, and I've, I've gone to bat with, with, uh, student, uh, with disability support um, because some professors um, do not understand that the, dis the disability rights, uh, their rights, they're not just what's convenient for the professor. Um, they can't penetrate that. Um, and I know that, uh, what's her name there, uh, Ms. Haddad is, is, is wonderful there. Um, these students often do not have the confidence for good reason or the educational background in their families to take these things on. They get some letter from one of our departments, I mean, maybe even mine, you know, saying you failed to do so-and-so, you're not getting credit, um, and, and it's, it's just brutal. Um, we can go to bat for them, and I think that goes along. Mm, thank you for sharing that. Appreciate sure. It. Javette, I haven't seen you in a long time, my friend. How are you? Hello, how are you, my friend? I'm well, thank you. Interested in hearing your comments. Um, and I apologize, I was on two meetings at the same time. Oh, and no it did worries. not contribute much to my group conversation. <laughs> so I am going to, um, I'm going to withhold, but I will say this, I mean, I, I'm on an, um, gonna be leading a new initiative to be focused on students who are parents. And I think really some of the ways in which I can think about how we need to be mindful about that student population in terms of being equitable is that, um, and I think that we're beginning to see it now in the sense that uh, faculty and staff alike have had to push themselves to be more flexible than they've ever been in the past. And sometimes when you're nudged to do those things, um, you don't put up as much resistance, right? And those can be wonderfully beautiful um, portals of discovery to help you learn in which ways you can be flexible without it sacrificing anything, especially when we're looking at an academic environment where we're absolutely committed to ensuring that our students are learning and meeting those objectives. And I think one of the things that I would like to see um, extended beyond this period is that we can continue to be flexible um, in ways that maybe you might see more often as individuals continue to progress throughout their education. Once you become a graduate student, you begin to hear a language like, oh, well, we're all working professionals now. You know, we're, we're professional students at this point, but allowing students to have a little bit more autonomy about how they're able to achieve some of the objectives in class when it comes to deadlines, just flexibility with how assignments um, can be turned in or how students participate in class, especially um, you know, when they're juggling multiple responsibilities and so much is out of their control and not let that be a reflection of their commitment or desire to do well in their courses. So I hope that kind of is a general contribution from my perspective. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to hear from somebody from facilities, someone who is not in the classroom. Would anyone from facilities like to share or or anyone that 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 isn't that is a staff uh, member that that uh, isn't necessarily in the classroom. What does an equitable, inclusive environment look like in your area? I ca I can say a, a couple of small things. Uh, so. Um, being in facilities, as you say, Sharon, is different from the academic side, so uh, it looks a little bit different. Uh, one thing we try to do is always have a uh, student uh, aide or student uh, intern in our department. In fact, before the, uh, we went to work remotely, we had two uh, uh, helping us. 
uh, in our department. Uh, the other way was uh, to encourage staff to cross train and do uh, things. Um, so we have, we have one uh, female custodian, for example, who expressed interest in switching over to the uh, maintenance side. You know, which yeah. is typically that's a guy kind of area working with all the, the yeah machines and stuff like that. You know, so so I'm uh, working on that to see how we can make that transition. It gives her a new opportunity to learn uh, new things, and who knows, you know, she might decide to pursue that. And it's the ideal time to do it, being that things are a little bit slow or not as busy for the custodians. You know, so. Uh, Whereas uh, the maintenance side, perhaps they could use, I know for sure they can use her, her assistance because they're looking for someone <laughs> to, to help right. with certain things, you know. So, uh, so that's uh, one way uh, we can achieve equity, equity and inclusivity for employees. Uh, as I mentioned, the students uh, interns would be for, for interns. The other way is actually not 100% facilities. It's a program that I developed with uh, with the help of uh, student affairs with specifically Dr. Rasha, which was the uh, Future Builders um, uh, intern uh, internship program. And uh, that's been in place for about a year or so. And we've had various, um, uh, every time we try to get it going, you know, something happens. And for example, the, when we went to work remotely, but the idea with that is to have students uh, participate in some of our construction projects that we have here in the college, like the student services building in Rockville, or now we have the uh, science building starting up in Tacoma Park. So uh, students who are exploring careers in construction or engineering, you know, could benefit from attending all the construction meetings and stuff and or ones who are already decided on that major you know they can build up on that uh, on their academic studies with some of that uh, internship type uh, experience and um, mm -hmm. the uh, contractor that's building the uh, math and science building they actually came out and said officially that they they would be willing to to host an intern you know for the duration of the project you know from uh, that's awesome uh, yeah so I just coincidentally received an email last week just uh, from one particular one who's interested and, and um, she hasn't uh, made up her mind on a major yet, but perhaps that would tip the scale in the favor of engineering or construction, you know, right. maybe, you know, so, right. so we can help. I love out. that. I yeah. love that. And we're de definitely need, um, need more diversity in terms of gender diversity. In right. Yeah, so I was mentioning in the chat room uh, when we were building the CT uh, project, uh, the demolition team uh, that basically gutted the whole building inside was all female. I think there was one guy, wow. <laughs> and the and the team leader that had their 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 superintendent or what have you was was female, and they were tearing out the walls and driving all the forklifts inside the building and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> so oh it, was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, so I think, I think we need more of that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Anyone else want to share quickly before we, uh, we wrap up? Uh, I'd like to comment uh, to Howard about the plight of part-time faculty getting full-time jobs at MC. Um, I'm with the uh, part-time union. We did get language added to the latest contract, which went into effect uh, this semester, that if you apply for a job and don't get an interview, you can request a meeting with the uh, relevant department chair who will tell you why you didn't get an interview and also to provide advice on how you can get, do better. Mm -hmm. I also have to disclose um, during our contract negotiations, um, mad, uh, MC management revealed that Montgomery College is more particular than any of the other community colleges in the state when it comes to hiring. It has, if you must have a very relevant 
postgraduate degree. For example, if you want to teach a writing class, if you want a full-time writing uh, position in English, you must have a writing master's. Not uh, uh, one in literature will not do. And that also makes it a little bit harder for people to get full-time jobs because there is a lot of specificity MC is very specific when you apply for a full-time job that your master's or postgraduate degree mm -hmm. fits. Mm -hmm. uh, writer Thank note, you for sharing that. I appreciate that because, you know, not everyone on this call recognized that. So, so thank you for sharing that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that, seriously. Um, yeah, you know, um, I know uh, um, Karen Pende Martinez is sharing the employee um, uh, goal, that's goal two, and I know that she is um, definitely listening and, and taking taking back some of the things that uh, that have been shared. Now, uh, moving on to the to what's happening in the next few weeks is I'm really I'm really excited that uh, that the rest of my colleagues are going to lead uh, the the um, next uh, series of of these town halls. Um, but I did want to put uh, put up this slide here about seeking learning communities for yourself. In Pacey, this is something that we do monthly. So um, in in all of our meetings, we build in a training component or some type of skill sharing or learning. But you know, you all could do this too. Um, I was so pleased this summer when um, when Donna Shena, who's the senior vice president for AFS, for those of you that don't know, invited me to attend their uh, retreat, and, and we got a chance to actually talk about, uh, about some of these, um, these issues involving equitable, inclusive um, uh, experiences and developing them. And, and uh, I invite any of you all that are interested to certainly call on anyone in Pacey that can uh, certainly help you through that. We have a list of all the Pacey members on our website as well. So, so Sharon, if I could give a plug to you, <laughs> uh, Sharon and, and Dr. Brown came uh, at an AFS administrator uh, meeting retreat, and and it was it was really it was very good. They facilitated the conversation, and as a result of that, we'll be doing something related to this body of work uh, quarterly in our leadership teams, and they, with the expectation get back to the campuses. So, Thank you so much. Thank you. If you can schedule her in there, uh, it's, it's a really wonderful um, facilitation. And I, I think this session today really represents um, what you do and how you do it um, for the college. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. We have these uh, intentional about creating experiences for students as well. Um, and you, uh, you'll see here a flyer that we had for the first time, a Let's Talk Students. We're gonna have the monthly. So we had this one on free speech, hate speech. Uh, we had uh, about 127 or so people in that, in that uh, Zoom. And it was so exciting to uh, hear from about 100 students talk about, uh, about how they, their, what they learned about free speech and hate speech and how to communicate effectively. Um, as I mentioned, we're continuing this uh, road show. Um, next Friday, we will have goal one. This is a deep dive. So um, as opposed to me giving this general overview, um, each one of the goals will be discussed and how we can actually get it done. So I'm really excited. Please, please join uh, Dr. Milton Nash uh, um, and his, and, and, and his uh, group for, for that. In addition, the first equity inclusion pop-up um, for, uh, for this, actually, but this is number two. We had one uh, earlier, which was around the census. And this is the second one, STEM is, all, is, is for all. Do I belong? So this is uh, facilitated um, uh, by uh, Dr. Milton Nash and Dr. Rebecca Thomas. So, um, and then again, you'll see here, First Friday's Book Club, how to be an anti-racist. Tell me in your, in your, when you fill out the evaluation form, is this a good time? You know, we've been struggling with uh, making sure, you know, faculty teach and, and I got people on the committee that are sharing, I can't get on anything until two. And so I wanna be respectful of faculty members that are, are doing that. But I also know that Friday afternoons is kind of tough for people. And I know folks wanna be out of here uh, and going on to do something else 
Um, I know I like to spend Friday afternoons in uh, writing uh, and reading because I don't want to, I want to clear up my Zoom space, like headspace. <laughs> so um, please share that with me. I, I'd appreciate that. If there's anything else for the good of the order, uh, Dr. Bonaparte, would you like to add any conclusion? No, I think you've covered all of it and we're excited about just the upcoming uh, town hall, like Sharon mentioned already. Um, it will be a deep dive and so you'll be able to put, give your input and all of that. So we look forward to having you all join us starting next Friday for goal one. All right, take care y'all.